Thanks for having me back, guys. I, uh... How many of you guys saw the first uh, first night, the first film, the uh, Unlocking the Mystery of Life? Well, lots of you guys. And then who, uh, of those that saw the first one, keep your hands up. How many of you guys saw last week's Privileged Planet? It's almost all you guys. Okay, so vote. I'm just just for curiosity, which one did you guys like better? And I don't get offended, right? We um, I'm with the company that produced those, but uh, so of, of the first one, Unlocking the Mystery of Life, which covered the the biology or microbiology, what, that was your favorite. We got three. Privileged Planet. Yeah. Wow. Okay. We get. Uh, that's pretty common. It seems like Privileged Planet tends to be a little bit more popular. I have a penchant for unlocking the mystery of life. So all you guys that raise your, raise your hand for Privileged Planet, I'll be praying for your souls. <laughs> uh, what am I going to cover tonight? Okay. Um, we've covered in the first week, right? Was uh, the evidence for um, intelligent design in microbiology. The second week, we w looked at Privileged Planet, which uh, talks about the, uh, the evidence for God or an intelligent designer in cosmology and astronomy and so forth, right? Now we're going to look at not so much the positive case for intelligent design, although there is a positive case that's being presented tonight, uh, but it's looking at, um, like you mentioned, the fossil record. And, you know, one of the, one of the stories I like to bring up is, um, you know, in my old alma mater, um, I ran into one of the, the evolutionary biology teachers at uh, it's Newport Harbor High School. And this is a Christian lady, sweet, sweet lady. And I uh, got the chance to sit down with her and ask her, you know, uh, my understanding is you teach evolution in your class and you're a Christian. She's like, yep. And I asked her, you know, what is it that has compelled you to believe that evolution is true? And she said, the fossil record. And I asked her, I go, what about the fossil record makes you think uh, evolution is true? How does it corroborate the story that Darwin gave? And uh, she said, well, because it shows forms going from small, uh, you know, simple forms to more complex forms. And we see that in the fossil record. And I asked her, I go, have you ever looked at it? She said, no. And I go, would it shock you to find out that Darwin himself in The Origin of Species said the most obvious objection you can levy against my theory is the fossil record? Did you guys know that? No. The most obvious objection to my theory is the fossil record. There's a few reasons why he brought that up. Is that there were, for example, a lack of transitional forms. There was also no kind of beginning with single cell organism and a, and a cleverly branching tree of life. But rather, as you're going to see, there was a sudden massive explosion of life that happened. And Darwin looked at that and said, that doesn't fit with what I believe. So I asked this teacher, and I went through an exercise. And I said, hey, listen, you, you know what I do for a living, but let me, let's play scientist for a minute. Let's create two competing hypotheses. And let's make some predictions, right? We always hear that science is an, a, an effort to um, look at and study and measure things, and it helps, and it makes predictions, right? You create a hypothesis, then you predict how things will look, and then you measure that and see if what you anticipated would happen based upon your hypotheses is correct, okay? So everybody in here, you guys want to play scientist with me real quick? Oh, yeah. Okay, pretend you're a biology teacher teaching evolution as a Christian to the school and answer some of these questions. If evolution were true, what would we expect for the number of transitional beings? Thousands. Millions. So we heard thousands. Lots How many? Lots. Millions? Did you? Yeah. Millions? Anybody? Any, any other numbers? One. <laughs> <laughs> one would be nice. Just give me one, right? I mean, good point. Now, if, if evolution is not true, if the competing theories are, are, are more accurate, how many would we expect? Zero. Zero, right? Now, uh, Darwin himself commented and said, it would, if my theory were true, we would expect the fossil record to be teeming with so many transitional forms, it would be innumerable. So we're throwing out numbers. Darwin was saying in his prediction that it's beyond us being able to even count it. There would be so many of them. Billions of years, billions of transitions. Okay? So millions versus zero. Okay? Transitional... Creatures, and I wish I had a whiteboard. Normally, I'm doing this on a piece of paper on a whiteboard, but somebody just kind of well, let's keep track of this. Millions versus none. How would the beginning of life look? Would it, what's that? Very simple. Very simple, right? Going from maybe a single-celled organism and going progressively complex. 
if it was more of a, you know, an intelligent designer seated, you know, the life as it is, uh, how would it look? Complex. Highly complex right from the beginning, right? Mm -hmm. Very, very complex where it doesn't look like there was anything branching into that, okay? So, again, number of transitional beings, thousands or millions. Also, the beginning of life would be super simple, perhaps single-celled organisms, right? Okay, other predictions. Um, design features that we see, you know, for example, eyes, right? Once the design, that design feature appears in the fossil record, would we anticipate that it would then disappear and then reappear later in creatures? Or is it more likely, if evolution is correct, that in fact, once a design feature is created, it, it, it then will persist until it is lost, and then it will not likely come back again because of how improbable it is to create any design feature. We saw that in the irreducibly complex um, uh, features of the, the microorganisms, right? So would we ever expect that like certain features, like let's just say eyesight, would bounce around the fossil record and find itself and suddenly it skips the next transition and then the other transition after does have lots of eyesight and then maybe we find eyesight over in a branch that never even had it from, to begin with until suddenly it appears here um, it bounces around or would it be suddenly an appearance and then it passes on that, that um, uh, survival aid what do you guys expect? Well, the evolutionists would say that it's that once it appears and then it's, it enhances survivability, that will pass on and continue and branch, right? The, yeah, if it was more seeded, it might be like it, it, there's no consistency in it. It might appear in, in one form of, of life. It might appear in other branches of uh, the fossil record. It might skip generations, so forth. It's kind of it could be more, a little bit more haphazard, right? Okay, that's another thing. Um, Extinction. What would cause extinction? If evolution were true, what do you think? Environment. The environment, or per perhaps what happens is as the transitional creatures become more advanced, the less advanced ones lose out from competition, right? Mm -hmm. That's natural selection. Mm -hmm. right? So we would expect that the main form of extinction would be caused by the forms becoming more advanced and the, the less advanced form would die off as a result because of competition, right? Does that make sense? Yeah. Whereas if it's not evolution, what would we expect? Environment. Environment, right? Maybe cataclysmic events, perhaps? Something else unrelated to that, right? Okay. Um, would we, if evolution were true, we would see obviously things transitioning or evolving, right? If evolution were not true, would we be more likely to expect that once a creature appears, it pretty much stays pretty standard, consistent, very little change, right? We call that in evolutionary biology stasis. So we would consider either evolution or stasis, right? What would evolution support? Evolution. Evolution, right? <laughs> Evolving versus stasis, okay? Next. Um, and we talked about this as the origin of life, but also just the origin of each individual type of creature. Um, evolution would say we would see a branching tree, right? Versus if it wasn't, if something, you know, it's what we call saltation. If intelligent design was involved, we would see something more like just the sudden appearance of a creature, right? And then once that creature appears, as I talked about stasis, then that creature would kind of continue in its same form until it went extinct, right? Okay, so let's review what we've agreed. As, our, as scientists, good scientists here, we've made some predictions. We've predicted if evolution is true, that the beginning would begin with single cell organisms or something very, very simple, and we'd see a trend toward progressively more complex creatures. Mm -hmm. Two, we predicted that the number of transitional forms would be innumerable, millions, thousands, whatever, right? The design features that once they appeared, they would be passed on pretty consistently. If they ever disappeared for whatever reason, then there's, they would never reappear again. The ability to create these just highly complex features of a body are so improbable, it's just not likely they would reappear again. Okay? Um, extinction results from more, uh, more advanced creatures beating out the less advanced ones in competition. We would expect not stasis, but transitions. Uh, or, or evolution, and we would not expect saltation or the sudden appearance of creatures. We would see um, 
uh, or we would expect that there was a progression to that creature. Okay, those are our predictions, right? In summary. Okay? Now, what do you think the fossil record says? Who's telling the record? What's that? I say, who's telling the record? They twisted badly. Well, right, and, and, and I use that loosely. In fact, that the, the fossil record doesn't say anything. Um, we always need to be careful about that, right? What fossil record is, is evidence, and then we begin to place an interpretation on that, okay? But in answer to these questions, where does evolution line up on these predictions? Which of these predictions came true? None. None of them. The fossil record shows several features. First, the beginning was a sudden, massive explosion of highly complex organisms. You're going to see examples of that here where they just appear out of nowhere. And every major body form that we know of, we call this phyla, right? If you remember the whole biology, um, different branches and so forth, at the level of phyla is the body plans. You know, it's like the exo, uh, uh, exoderm and the, uh, the vertebrae, right? We're all vertebrates. Um, all major body plans appear in the, fossil, or in the earliest stages of life. Uh, the design features are not very consistent. So in some instances, you know, some will have eyes for a while, then they lose the eyes, and then they gain it again, and then somehow eyes appear over here, in, according to the way in which taxonomists have put the tree of life allegedly together. And they can't put it in any order where it doesn't create that conundrum. They're like, gosh, it doesn't make sense. It's like suddenly we have to think that this uh, unbelievably miraculous appendage or something uh, that's super unlikely appeared in two different places or crossed over. That's another example. Um, extinction. We know that extinction did not happen because of in increasingly competitive forms, but rather we have mass extinction events that are the, are the predominant cause of the loss of life here on Earth. So mass extinction events are like, you know, a big asteroid hitting the Earth um, and, uh, and maybe causing, you know, dinosaurs to die, for example. Um, and there's several, there's been many of those that we have, that scientists have documented. Of course, assuming an old Earth tradition. I'm going to talk to that in a minute. Uh, but um, anyway, transition versus stasis. What we see? Stasis. And lastly, uh, transition versus saltation. We see the def definitive evidence for saltation. And I think it's in this film, if I'm not mistaken, but even Dawkins himself said that if you see evidence of saltation, that in itself is a miracle. So it's not a naturally explainable thing. And what we're going to show you is that there is evidence for saltation. Okay. Now there's a question? Yeah, I'm just wondering why there should be, if these evolutionists, why there should be any concern for endangered species, because if they can't attack it, they, can't, they should be evolving. Yeah, or why, why evolutionists? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Inconsistent. Yeah, would say, there's, there, they haven't demonstrated a lot of consistency in their science, so why in their uh, um, uh, uh, outreach or uh, benefactor uh, activity, so. There's yeah. still a lot yeah. yeah, there's some. No, there's people. Um, anyway, we're going to see that in more detail here, you guys. But anyway, I had this conversation with the biology teacher, and uh, her answer at the end was, well, we don't teach it a whole lot. <laughs> anyway, um, but you guys, that's what's, that's what's being taught out there. It's being taught as fact. I mean, you hear um, Dawkins say, like, you know, you know, evolution is a fact. And anybody who denies it or questions it is, you know, is either insane or evil. Um, and, uh, and he goes, well, I'd rather not pr you know, think that they're evil, so they're probably just insane. Well, there's a lot of very intelligent and very sane people that have some very serious questions and doubts about evolution for good reason. You know, the best evidence for evolution that's been proffered are things like, you know, the evidence for microevolution. We've heard that, right? Peppered moths going from black to white and back. Right, HIV virus building up immunities and so forth. Right, we all agree with that. Right, so is evolution a fact? Well, yeah. I mean, depending on what form of evolution you're referring to, but um, but that those evidence of microevolution, what we know is a fact, does not correlate necessarily to a a, a profound macroevolutionary theory. Um, embryology. Uh, I'm not going to steal the thunder too much from next week, but I think next week we're watching Icons of Evolution. So we're going to discuss that. What Dar Darwin did say was the best evidence for his theory was embryology, uh, the study of organisms as they begin to during the gestation period. Okay? 
We're not going to touch too much about that, but you'll learn next week that the best evidence for Darwinism was discovered to be a fraud. And yet it's still taught today, even though that scientist was, what has been proclaimed publicly as having committed fraud. Oh, my. Okay? Still teaching. That'll be next week, so just to wet your whistle on that, that next week. Um, morphology, that, you know, creatures have similar features, right? So when you see flippers on a whale or a human, we all have five uh, bones in the structure. So that's really good evidence for evolution. It's also pretty good evidence for design, right? We, uh, we design cars and most of them come with four wheels. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, um, tra transitional creatures. Um, it's often uh, mentioned that the ar Archaeopteryx, have you guys heard of that? The half dinosaur, half bird. Um, anyway, that'll be often uh, put forth. Now, most of science has rejected that um, as a transitional creature, and there's good reason. I'll get to that in a second. And yet, it's still proper today as a potential transitional form, usually in the non-academic circle. So I bring it up in your context because you'll maybe be talking to uh, a typical person out there who bring up, you know, what about the Archaeopteryx? You know, it's, that shows that for, you know, birds came from dinosaurs. Well, there's a couple problems with that. Is one, first off, we know for a fact that it's not. Um, it, it wasn't a flying creature. But uh, same token, it appears in the fossil record after birds. So somehow, birds came out before the transitional form and supposedly caused them. So it doesn't work very well. Anyway, I share that with you guys. So the argument that I bring up, um, he asked, what is the best argument for uh, intelligent design from the fossil record? And the argument I bring up is I ask the question, what would we expect to see if we didn't come with it, come to the evidence with our biases, but we made predictions as science is supposed to do? And I've never heard anybody make different predictions than the ones we've heard today. And then you let the fossil record match up with the two predictions. And you know who comes out really clean? Intelligent design. And you know who looks like they don't have a single leg to stand on? Naturalistic evolution. So anyway, you guys enjoy the film tonight. This is actually one of my favorite because one, and it took the most work. It was the hardest one to make because um, of all the computer graphics. But it's fascinating. You're going to hear another argument that I think I talked about in the first week too that talks about how certain cells need to know where their end, end result is going to be as they go along the process of dividing. So be watching for that because it's, it's a super compelling argument. Anyway, enjoy the film, you guys, and thanks. What was the last thing you said after creation over? Undergraduates, I studied engineering and I had very.